Hello guys, welcome to another uh, GeoServer tutorial. Um, in the previous videos we checked on how to install GeoServer in both Linux and uh, 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 Linux Ubuntu and Windows 10. So now we are going to look at uh, you know how we can interact with these uh, GeoServer. And uh, in this tutorial we are going to look at uh, uh, how to start GeoServer. And uh, we are going to also look at the GeoServer uh, user interface. And uh, because it is a user interface, the web interface, it has a number of uh, things, a number of links. And uh, it's good to see how these uh, links, were, what they do, uh, these different links. So we'll just get started. So I'm using, uh, Geos uh, I'm using Windows uh, in this tutorial. So I have installed my uh, GeoServer inside the uh, ZAMP, uh, which is a like a web server a manager for the uh, Windows. So I'll just start Tomcat. I've installed uh, GeoServer inside Tomcat. If you don't know how to um, install this, uh, you can check on my previous video on installing GeoServer in Windows uh, 10 because I've used uh, ZAMP. Uh, and uh, Tomcat. So I'll we'll just open my browser and then we are going to navigate to the uh, my local host which is uh, where GeoServer resides in. And we have the port number which is 8082, 8082 and uh, slash geo uh, GeoServer. So we'll just give it some time. Yeah, so this is a web interface. This is how it looks like before uh, logging in. We have the uh, icon for GeoServer on the top left. We also have the user in, uh, username and the password fields and uh, remember me checkbox and the login. And then we also have some details on about uh, GeoServer. And then we have a welcome message uh, indicating who this GeoServer belongs to and uh, the, the version that uh, we are using. So we are using 2.19.1. So I'll click on uh, about to begin with and uh, this just shows uh, the details on the version that uh, for the geo server that has been installed. Uh, we also have the git version uh, with the repository in github. We have the day that it was uh, built. Uh, we have also the Geo tools version that has been used and the Geo web cache version, and then we have other details on these uh, Geo server. You can also open the documentation, uh, look at the wiki page, and the issue tracker. If you have issues, you can uh, report the issues using these links. So let's just start with the documentation, and I'm opening it in a new uh, tab. So this is the official documentation for Geo server whereby you can check on a list of things on how to you know, how to install, how to use GeoServer and some tutorials and also extensions that uh, GeoServer has. And then you can check on the wiki. So if I open the wiki on uh, this, this is where we have the wiki in the GitHub page for GeoServer. Uh, we have the details, other details that you can check. And then we also have the issue tracker. So when you open the issue tracker, it is uh, hosted in Atlassian uh, uh, portal or yeah, and they use Jira. I can note this from the link of, which is used in managing <coughs> software development. Uh, yeah. So because you can see the issues that have been posted here and uh, yeah, so that is just to mention a few things that you can do on the under the about GeoServer, and then we have the under data we have layer preview. So this layer preview gives us an access to the layers. So I've just installed this GeoServer. So these are the default layers or the default data that comes with the with it, and uh, uh, we can see the list of these uh, datas and uh, the formats that are supported as well. But we'll look at this in detail in a, a later video. So we also have demos, whereby you can check the a demonstration of how GeoServer works. So we can check on the demo requests. 
so if you wish to request on uh, something like a uh, uh, data or uh, from a different layer you can check using these you can select the url and select whatever you want to check if it's a get feature get map but we shall also look at these in detail later we also have something written SRS, which stands for Spatial Reference System, uh, spatial SRS list. So this is the SRS list for the supported, all the supported uh, uh, spatial reference systems. So as you can see, there is a code uh, and there is a description for these uh, uh, spatial reference systems. So if you are working with GIS data or geospatial data, you may need to have knowledge on these uh, spatial reference systems. So we can also check on the reprojection console, uh, which is, it is a simple coordinate reprojection tool, uh, whereby you can change the coordinate system, reference system for the source layer, and uh, you can uh, get the target coordinate reference system. And whatever we'll display here will be the transformation parameters. So we are also not going to, we'll, we are not going to look at this right now, but uh, just to mention these, we also have the WCS, Request Builder, Web Coverage. WCS stands for the Web Coverage Service. So you can also decide to, if you want to check the, the <coughs> web coverage, you can uh, just use this uh, Web Coverage Request Builder. So these are some of the services that you can be able to access uh, using, the, using this uh, interface. So I'll just go back to the home page. So under this message we have as i had mentioned earlier we have the company maybe with or the organization that this geoserver belongs to so i've just added something here and then we have the who you can contact so uh, the administrator has a an email link and then we have what we call the services capabilities so geoserver supports uh, several uh, ogc web services or so open geospatial consortium web services so we have these different uh, uh, what you refer to as abbreviations for the web coverage service, web feature service, web map service, uh, tile map service, web map tile service, and the versions that it supports. So we are also going to look at this in detail later. So don't worry about the terminologies right now. So we'll just log in. So the, uh, when you install GeoServer, the default password is uh, username is admin, and the default password is GeoServer. So we'll just log in, GeoServer. Yeah, and uh, this is how it looks like after you have logged in. So you'll notice that on the left panel, uh, let me try and zoom in. On the left panel, we have uh, various categories, about and status, data, services, settings, tile caching, uh, security, demos, and tools. And uh, in the middle here, we have the welcome message, a shorter one this time. And then we have the layers, stores, and workspaces. And then, you know, we have some message here that states it is highly recommended to change the password because the password is default. And uh, it's GeoServer. So if you are using this in a production environment, uh, so you, need, you may need to change this password to something else. Uh, yeah, so that's why we are seeing this message. So we'll just look at uh, a number of items like, uh, let's start with the about, server status. So this just shows uh, the server status, where my the, the server resides, a uh, number of locks, a uh, number of connections to this server, uh, the memory usage. So I've uh, given these about uh, around uh, 8 GB. However, this is a, uh, this one has been set by GeoServer. So GeoServer being a, you know, a Java-based uh, servlet application, a Tomcat application, what it does, it takes a quarter of the uh, memory that you are using. So in this case, uh, the machine that uh, we are using here has 32 GB of RAM. So it has uh, taken a quarter of that RAM, which is the 8 GB. And then we have also the Java virtual machine. Uh, in a previous video, you may see us install these, uh, the JDK, Java Development Kit. So it comes or ships with it what you call the JVM and this Java virtual machine is what enables us to run uh, most Java applications in uh, you know cross platform and then we have the Java rendering engine so this is a rendering engine for the images uh, 
like the geotiffs and uh, the like, uh, ge geospatial data that is in uh, image format and uh, handles also the resolution. And then we have also the available fonts that uh, GeoServer supports. Let me open this in a new tab. So it supports all these fonts. Uh, you can navigate using these numbers to check which fonts are supported. If you uh, maybe if your font that you're interested in support is supported. And then you also have the what you call the native Java advanced uh, imaging. Uh, currently it's not installed, but it also has to do with the uh, handling of uh, raster data or uh, the imagery uh, geospatial data. So we also have the maximum memory setup for Java uh, advanced imaging and the usage at the current time. Uh, we also have uh, the threads, uh, processing threads. So these are just some, um, uh, what you'd refer to as the specifications uh, that are being, uh, that uh, this current GeoServer is using. So yours may be different or maybe the same dependent on your machine and also the settings that you have set. So you can also free the memory. For example, if I see my memory is too much, I can just click here and it uh, tries to to free some memory. It uses the uh, the garbage collector for Java, uh, but uh, that is on another level. So if you have changed your configuration, you can also reload using the reload button sh uh, shown here. But you have not done that, so you just leave it as it is. So we also have the second tab, which is the modules. So the modules, uh, these are the current modules that come with GeoServer. I have not uh, installed any new modules. So we have the GeoWebCache, GeoServer, KML, hand for handling, keyhole markup language files. We also have all these LDAP for managing uh, the Active Directory. We also have the Java JDBC for connecting to the uh, Java, uh, sorry, for connecting to the database. Then we also have the what you are calling the WCS, the web coverage service, uh, web user interface, web demos, uh, the REST API for GeoServer, and uh, we also have the rendering engine among others. Yeah, so these are just some configuration for the uh, GeoServer that may be more important to the uh, maybe the server administrator or whoever is managing the GeoServer. So we also have the system status. Uh, it indicates when these uh, information was updated and then we have under it we have the operating system we have the time that it has been up uh, we also have the uh, uh, load time we have the number of cpus being used uh, the physical cpus and the number of uh, the logical cpus and in this case it's using two two cores per each uh, physical CPU and that's why we have eight and then we have number of running processes we have the load on the CPU and uh, all these so these are just some configuration technical configurations for GeoServer and then we have something else that is very important which is the GeoServer logs so the GeoServer logs uh, tell us uh, or they log the information on as long as the GeoServer is running and uh, as you can see if you could start from the top line uh, or the information at the top, it displays a maximum uh, number of lines which are 1000. So you can change this information and refresh. So for example, if I change and say one line and refresh, you're going to see one line. If we add 10 lines, so we're going to see 10 uh, lines for the logs. So let me just set it maybe to 500 and uh, do a refresh. So it has 500 uh, lines uh, of uh, display. So as you can see, we have, uh, from when it started, uh, loading of uh, WFS service, loading of WMS. So it just logs this information uh, continuously and uh, shows whatever is happening in the GeoServer. So if there is an error or something like that, the, maybe the server administrator or whoever is administering this GeoServer would uh, come and uh, query this uh, log. And uh, you can also download the log, uh, the log file to your computer. So that is on the GeoServer logs. Then we have contact information. You can add, if you're using GeoServer in a company, you can just add your details. And then uh, the contact organization, email number, fax number, uh, zip code for your location, 
yeah, on the information uh, as such. Then we have the about geo server. So this about geo server it's just the one like the one we had seen uh, prior to logging in. So it's still the same uh, information that is here. And then we have what you call the data. The data under data we have the layer preview. We had done a preview initially, so the this is the same layer preview as it, uh, as it was before. So another thing to note is that we can you can log into some geo server and find that the layer preview is not active or before logging in. So the administrator can disable some of these uh, information. And then we have, so we're just going to open the layer preview quickly and you can see the all the list of all the layers that have been published or yeah, in the geo server. And then we have what you call a workspace. So a workspace, think of it like a working folder for, for your project. So that's what this workspace stands for. You can create a new workspace and also remove the selected workspaces. Then we have what you call a store. So let me just go back to the workspaces. If you try, you can add a new workspace whereby you add the name and also you add the namespace uh, user uh, resource, um, I'm forgetting the name, user resource identifier, the URI. And then you can also decide to select if it's a default, a default workspace or it's just an isolated workspace. And then you also have the security factors that yeah, you, may be, you may want to put on this workspace that you're creating. Then we have what you call the store. Uh, a store can be either uh, structured into or either a vector data store or a raster data store or other data stores and under other data stores we have these OGC web services, Open Geospatial Consortium web services, web map service and web map tile service. So you can add all these, you can add a directory of shapefiles which is a folder containing shapefiles, you can add a geo package, uh, you can also add a post GIS database, uh, you can also add this post GIS uh, JNDI, uh, I don't know what uh, this is but uh, at least I know these uh, the PostGIS database is a specially enabled database. Uh, this could have some special properties that uh, maybe uh, at this point I don't know, but you can check. Then we have uh, pro we can also add properties, uh, Java properties files. Uh, we can also add a shape file, an individual shape file, and a web feature service. So these are among the items that are supported under vector data source. Then under raster we have the ArcGrid. Uh, geo package, um, geo tiff, uh, image mosaic, and world image. So all these are supported uh, under the data source. So we also have. We are going to look at these uh, in a later video. We also have uh, the layers. So these are the layers that currently reside in these uh, geo server, and maybe we can click on one and see. So we have different. You can edit uh, layer properties here. Uh, you can edit the name, you know, you can choose if it's enabled or disabled. You can add a title and an abstract for this layer. Think of it as a, you know, like a metadata of sorts. Then you can add keywords. Uh, you can also add a metadata link. Um, and there are some standard standards that are supported. Um, and then we also have data links. We have these very important uh, coordinate reference system. And then you have the bounding boxes. So the bounding boxes is, is like the box that within which this layer exists, the corner points, uh, so to speak. So we also have, uh, if you want to add linear geometry with curves, you can also check on these. And then you can check on the feature type details, the property, uh, the data type, which is a multi-polygon. You can also check if it's uh, nilable, if it's zero values are allowed. You can also check the occurrences the number of times which these uh, data occurs. So, yeah, these are just some of the items that uh, you can also get in the documentation. We have another other items on publishing, uh, dimensions, uh, tile caching, and uh, also the layer security, who, where you can uh, grant uh, role-based access uh, to different groups. Uh, so you can, in this you can check different users, you can say certain users will not access maybe this uh, layer or this data and others can. Uh, certain users can read um, and maybe cannot write or certain users can read and write. And you can also check to grant access to all roles. You can use this checkbox. 
which will, uh, as you can note, it automatically checks all these items. So we have also what you call the layer groups. So these are just groups of layers uh, that have been added. They, these are, have come with the Geo server. And uh, yeah, there are multiple layers which have been grouped into one uh, group. Like this PFish has some DEM, simple stream, simple roads and all that. And then we can check on uh, the layer styles. You can also style your layer uh, or upload a, a default style in GeoServer. So these are the layers that are currently there. Then we have these services. We are going to look at these uh, later. So we have what we call the web map tile service that is supported. We have the web coverage service, web feature service, and web map service. And then we have the global settings whereby you can set the base user URL. So if you are hosting it in a server, for example, if it's in josephkarioki.com, then you have to, uh, you can, it's advised to add this proxy base URL to point to that particular geo server. Like it could be josephkarioki.com. Then we have all these settings. And uh, one very important thing is that you can set the logging. Uh, you remember we have looked at logs, you can select some of these loggings, but uh, this information is just uh, uh, mostly uh, relevant to the server uh, administrator. So we have the image processing, whereby you can use uh, this JAI, the Java Advanced Imaging uh, Library to ensure the image pro uh, processing goes fine. And uh, we also have uh, raster access. You can select the memory. You can edit the memory and CPU that can be the maximum CPU that can be used. Uh, because you know very well handling imagery requires uh, quite uh, some. Uh, it's uh, resource intensive. And then we have what you call tiling of layers. So when you upload layers, you can uh, decide to put them into uh, tiles. And uh, this is well done by something called the GWC, the Geo Web Cache. And then we have the grid sets uh, for different uh, uh, different uh, areas. We have like a grid set for the web uh, WGS84, the global coordinate system uh, that can be used to you know to display your tiled layers when you're tiling your layers. But these are things that we are going to check. And then we have what you call uh, the disk quarter. So you decide how much uh, disk that you are going to use. Um, and uh, the, of course, the, if you're using it, in a, you can point it to an external database or you can point it to the in-process database. Uh, so this is just, uh, you can set up the quota for the, uh, you can limit the quota that, uh, or the size that of the disk that can be used to store your data. And then we have what you call the blob stores. I haven't had time to look at these, but yeah, these are configure out. It could be a new or uh, another type of uh, support for tile caching. And then we have security settings whereby you can decide to edit uh, or configure your cryptography. If you want to enforce strong passwords and all these uh, policies, you can use uh, the, most of the items under the security tab. You can also add an authentication. Um, I think you can also in integrate these with something like the Google Authenticator, Authenticator API or the Django Authenticator API and all maybe some other authentica authentication system. And then you have the passwords. You can edit the passwords for different uh, users and also the what you call the password policy. If you want the user's password to be characters, you know, numbers and characters and all that, you can edit the password policy. You can also set up user groups, uh, different services and roles in this. Currently, by default, we have the admin and the group admin role. Uh, we also have the user groups, user slash groups, and we only have one user who is the admin uh, by default. And then we have the data tab. So you can select uh, the edit or the read write uh, rules to different layers uh, using these data security. Uh, you can also add services, uh, web feature service, web map service, and all these. Yeah, and this summarizes. You can also check out the demos so here. I checked and some tools. Uh, so we have a catalog bulk tool which can be used to test data uh, in bulk. Uh, yeah, and then I think it can come in handy if you want to. Yeah, to maybe copy or maybe add some data 
or rather process some data in bulk. So this summarizes the GeoServer uh, user interface and, um, and next we will look at how to upload uh, or how to create uh, some workspaces, stores, uh, create layers and upload layers and all that. So uh, until next time, uh, let's uh, check uh, out uh, this GeoServer. Uh, it could come in handy, especially if you have a company and you are managing different uh, data sets.